Okay, awesome. Uh, so we're going to start with the badges design workshop. Um, okay, so let me just introduce myself. Um, my name is Neera. I am an outreach intern with Fedora, and uh, I'm a part of the design team. I have been working uh, on badges um, for the last five, five months, and I just conducted a session on Inks and Inkscape's basic demo, and this is an extension to that. This is actually a more hands-on workshop. So um, if you guys could follow along with me, I'll tell you we, we have plenty of time. So this is a two-hour session. So what we're going to do is we're going to design some badges today, and hopefully it will be fun for everyone. OK, so um, I like this is supposed to be a very interactive every year at vlog and but since we are here right now it's hard for me to see you guys or hear you guys so i would like you to be really active in the chat box if you have any questions any queries any doubts just ask me right there and if you want if you want me if you want to share your screen or if you want to show me something you can even request i think there is a button there somewhere which says uh, share or Ask to join or something like that, so you can do that. And if you have any query, any doubts, so you can just click on that button. I will add you to the um, screen, and then we can talk about it. Okay. So, okay. How many of you have designed a badge for Fedora? You can do a plus one or a minus one in the chat box. I'm asking so that I can make sure to adjust the workshop accordingly. So if you have ever designed a badge for Fedora before, or maybe you did try once. Oh, OK. Oh, great. I know Snehal works in the badges team. So it's great to have someone from the technical side here. <laughs> there are some technical things I do not know. So hopefully Snehal can help us with that. And uh, okay, great. So, um, has any of you worked with Inkscape before, or maybe did done a little graphic design? Oh, you have. Nice. That's great. Okay, that will make things a lot easier then. Um, okay, so I guess we will start now. I'm just gonna share my whole window. Right, so I have prepared a slideshow, um, a presentation, and this presentation is available in the badges repo. So let's see, I'm going to drop the link here if you want to download the, you want to download the uh, presentation and you want to follow along with the, uh, you can do that right here. So I'm just going to drop the link in the chat box. Hi, Anhad. Right, so this is the link. Oh, wow, I can see a lot of <laughs> Smira right there. So this is the link. So you can go right there if you want to download the slides. Otherwise, I'll make sure that I drop all the links that I have in the chat box. Okay, so let's start. Uh, okay, so. Sorry about that. There we go. So this, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to discuss the badge itself. Wait, let me present it right anyway. So this is the anatomy of a badge. So what we're discussing here is how like the different layers in a badge. So this is the wait, let me just put my phone on sorry, there we go. Okay, so this is the outer ring. So badge, okay, so a badge has different layers, and you have to make sure that these uh, all these different layers are present in your badge 
if they're not, um, you might want to recheck and redesign your batch because all of these are in some way or the other necessary for a batch to be like 100% complete. So this is the outer ring, this white one right here, this along with the drop shadow. So you can see this, my mouse pointer, this is the drop shadow and this white outer ring. This is the base, you could say of the badge, then we have this colored ring. So this colored ring actually indicates what categories we have. So we have six categories of badges. Um, let's see, we have content, community, quality, miscellaneous, qual quality. Did I say quality already? There's development and content, community, Quality. I think I got all of them. Maybe I think I missed something, but we, we will check it out later. Okay, so we have six different categories and different colors indicate different categories. So this is the blue one. So this indicates the content so category. We have this background right here. This bag, these backgrounds are also related to the subcategory. Um, we will discuss more of this in depth later when we discuss the style guide. This is the pattern. If you can see these tiny baby lines, so there are different patterns that you can use in your patch. These waves are just one of them. Uh, while it is not 100% necessary to use this pattern, like all the other layers are definitely necessary, but this pattern you don't need to use um, if your artwork doesn't go with it. Yeah. And then this is the, I would say, uh, the part where mo that most people find intimidating, the graphic. Hopefully after today, um, you won't, people won't find it intimidating anymore and actually have fun doing this part. This is actually my favorite part. So yeah, let, let me just check if there are any questions. Nope, good to go. Okay. So let us just, so the first, so how this workshop is going to be structured is for the first 15, 20 minutes, we are going to discuss uh, the resources we have, the infrastructure, the websites, we're going to discuss that. And then we are going to start with the hands-on part of the workshop where we're going to design our own badges. So this is the badges website and it has essentially all the badges here. So you can see these are the latest awards. Snehal is right here. You just got the uh, Nest Attendee badge. And a lot of you will find your name here periodically if you are um, collecting this badge. And so we have a leaderboard sort of thing here. And this, this is the Explorer um, section. So you can see random badges here, people, tags, and you can generate reports depending on whatever you, however you want to filter it. And this is my favorite part of the whole thing. This, so this is the badge index. So this has all the badges that have ever been made and it's essentially, um, you could say, sort of a holy grail if when you're designing a batch because you will come a lot here to get inspired, use different artworks. So as you can see, we have content category, development, community, event. I think I missed event last time. Event, uncategorized, and we have quality. So if you scroll, there are a lot of badges. And that means that you have a lot of artwork to reuse and remix. So the graphic part that people are generally intimidated by, you can just re re reuse these graphics and remix them and you'll be good to go. Okay, so as you can see, we have a lot of different badges. If let's say, hmm, uh, Okay, let's go to this one. This is the Nest Attendee Badge. This is the one that you're currently getting. I just wanna show you um, how you can download these artworks. Okay, so this is essentially the badge profile. And if you see right there, there is the criteria and 
If you click on it, this will redirect you to the ticket, to the actual ticket where someone requested this badge. And as you can see, so I worked on it. And uh, so these SVG files, you can see this, and th this is the PNG file, so you can download all of this. So if you click on it, you can just download it. It's that easy. So, and this is like, you can do this for almost, almost all of the badges. Some of the older badges have missing SVGs, um, but honestly, like there are enough badges out there that you can use the artwork from. So yeah, this is the website. I'm just going to drop the link. I'm so sorry, I totally forgot. Just so that if you want, you can explore it on your own also. Okay, I'm just going to drop this one also. The next thing we're going to explore is the badges repo on Pajur. So, oh, I, we can copy paste that one. I forgot the initial part, so we can just copy paste that. Anyway, so this is the Pejur, this is the badges repo on Pejur. So this is where people open tickets and this is actually where you go if you want to design a batch. So when you click on it, this thing opens up. So you just go to issues and you can see that there are 111 open issues. So you can use any one of them. You can just open any one. So this is the one where I stored my slides. Um, this is someone asking for a badge for the uh, Titan and group member. So basically you can find that. Um, some of these uh, issues are tagged. So a good first issue is something that you can start with. Um, so these indicators are really helpful if you're starting out with some, if you want to start out with something that is easy, you can just filter, you can go with artwork needed, artwork needs improvement. Even artwork needs improvement, I found it pretty easy to do because you already have the artwork, you just need to tweak it. So if you are intimidated by the prospect of designing uh, an artwork from scratch, you can do this. Um, these are the different categories. You can go difficulty easy if you want to start with something easy. A good first issue or outreachy 2020. These are good issues if you are new to designing badges. The ready to push badges are actually already designed. They just need to be pushed. So if it's if it's tagged ready to push, don't bother with it, I would say, because the badge is already designed. Okay, so Let's move on to the next one. Okay, so basically that is, I just discussed this. So there are tags for different badges categories. There are easy, intermediate and hard tickets and easy is great for newbies and look for this good first issue. Um, that when I started contributing, that's what I did. I started with good first issue and outreach 2020 tags. Um, you might find, and go through, make sure that you go through the whole um, ticket because a lot of times what happens is, um, let's see, let's see. Okay, so this one, let's pick up this one. So this is a, this is ready to push, right? But let's say for a moment it was not. So sometimes what happens, some like people work on it, but they may leave it. Uh, halfway they may not be able to complete it. So you can find the SVGs here and you can continue with that. You don't need to um, start over. So just make sure that you go through everything really carefully uh, because th this is where the, like this is where it's mentioned um, what kind of badge uh, the person who opened the ticket is looking for. So a lot of times people hear they suggest. Uh, so this is a part of the ticket where people are asked if they have any ideas for artwork concepts. This one doesn't, but sometimes people give a very specific um, idea of what they're looking for. So yeah, and uh, sometimes when a design team member reviews the designs, that is also really helpful. 
So like you can see, Marie here has uh, reviewed this, the upper badges. So you should always go through all the comments before you start working on the badge. That will make your work like very easy or you might not even have to do a whole lot here. So a lot, a bunch of different people worked on it, this one. And I actually did this. So what happened was when uh, when this was uh, when I picked this up, there were all, there was already some artwork. So I just uh, made sure that it complied with the style guide, and then it was good to. So it was uh, I would say a day's work. So just make sure that you go through all the comments. I'm gonna see if there are any. Okay, if you have any doubts, just pop this right here, and I am regularly checking. So if you have any queries or if you want to point something out, I mean, I honestly, I even I am a newbie. So, okay. So this, the Fedora badge is design resources. So now that we're actually design, designing a badge, there are some great design resources that you already have set up. So if you go to this link right here, this is the docs for the badges. And you can see that honestly, everything that I'm going to cover in this presentation, it's right here. Like you could just read through it. So it's really helpful, this uh, doc space. So it has this style guide. So let's start with the style guide. So the, the important thing to notice that the design resources that we need is the style guide, the backgrounds, the template, and the actual content. So let's start with the style guide. So this is the style guide. And if you are unsure of how to start making a badge or how to basically, what are the rules that you need to follow, make sure that you read this properly and you are constantly uh, referring to this guide when you because there are a lot of common mistakes that we make when we start out and this pad, this guide actually helps you avoid those mistakes. So you do not, you do not waste time. So these are the different categories. You have six different categories. So it actually tells you what color. So even if you do not, did not know that there were different colors for different categories, if you review the style guide, you will be informed. So these are the different categories. And each category also has a certain like background color associated with it, which is not very hard and fast, you could say. But it would be great if you could, you know, try to adhere to it so that all the badges are have a uniform style. The thing is, um, in open source projects like these, we have a lot of different contributors and something uh, like design, something like the badges, which is this huge repository of different designs. Um, if there was no style guide, it would be all over the place, right? Because each person has their own unique art style. So if you follow this style guide, it makes sure that there is a uniformity and all the badges look similar. So, so these are the different categories. This is the color palette. So I, like you see what I mean when, the, when I say that this, this style guide has everything you will need. So, so these, these are the different patterns that I talked about. Sometimes you might even have these um, graphical pa uh, backgrounds. So, these are really nice. You already have a lot, a bunch of these made. So even if you feel like you can't do this yourself, you have templates for this. And these, these are some do's and don'ts, typography rules. So I'm just gonna drop the link here. You can um, go through this, it's really helpful. And it helps to make sure that after you make a badge, um, so these, if you if you do not adhere to it, the, th the mistakes you make, they will be pointed out by the design team member, then you, you have to essentially do it again, um, uh, someone else will. So um, it just helps you to save, sa save some time if you stick to this, right? So 
if you go to the, I think I have the docs, yeah. Okay, so here are all the assets you will need. So the bad shapes, the different templates, you can download it right here. The content templates, the background templates. So let's say you need a background, but you don't know how to make one. You can just download this SVG right here and you have a bunch of these templates. So all you have to do is just download it, save as, and then you can use it. So, I mean, there are a lot of resources. If you are aware, you just use them. It makes making badges really easy. Okay, so this is actually the tutorial content from the previous workshop. So this workshop is actually is a regular workshop that is conducted by Marie Norden, the F Cake um, at Flock. So these are the, these are the previous tutorial contents, and you have these graphics. Oh, so if you are um, worried about designing the artwork, I have never ever designed this guy ever. <laughs> It's way too difficult. I mean, I just use the old templates and kind of remix it. Like, let's say if I want this guy, but I don't want the doctor get up, I'll just delete this and I have the top half of a badger. So same for different graphics. These are the miscellaneous items you can use. So honestly, there's a lot of stuff. And beyond this, you have the... Um, The badge index, which you can use. I'm glad it's helping you out, Anhad. So the, this, um, just I, I think I have dropped this before, but I'm just dropped another link for the docs uh, page. You can uh, go through it. It's really super helpful. I mean, if you, I should not say this, but if you were to leave right now and go through the docs, I mean, 80% of the of your problems would be solved. But for the 20%, let's just please stick with me. Okay. Well, so now the theory part is over, and now we'll go on to the actual tutorial. So um, what I do is I go through these slides uh, quickly just to give you an overview of what we're going to do. And then we're going to start over. We're going to come back and we're going to do each and everything together so that everyone is on the same page. And if there are any troubles, any uh, doubts you have, uh, we'll try to clear those so that we can start designing badges. Right. So the first thing, of course, we're going to do is we are going to download and install all the relevant resources this includes Inkscape, um, the palette, the templates. Then we are going to identify a ticket that needs artwork. Then we're going to do some research for the, uh, for the badge. Then we are going to categorize that badge. And we're going to open download the templates. We're going to decide the backgrounds the patterns if we want, and then we're going to work on the artwork. The, then we'll try to see how we can make the different graphics that is used that are used in the badges, and then we will post it. We will submit it for review. Okay, so this part of the workshop is where you guys are going to have to work. So the first thing I'm going to ask is we're going to download all relevant resources. So if you, oh, thanks, Sayak. I hope everyone is on board. <laughs> yeah, so if you go to this link that I sent right here, this one, and if, for those of you who don't have Inkscape, you can go here and you can download Inkscape 1.0. Oh, this is the latest release that just came out. Oh, you can choose your OS here and you can download it. So I let me just ask how, wait. Okay, so how many of you don't have Inkscape installed? Just, just drop like a plus one or a minus one so that I can wait for you guys. 
Oh, do you have, you do have Inkscape. Yeah, you have it installed. Um, okay, so if anyone else is installing it, just put it on in the background. We'll discuss a few more things. Um, okay, Ashna, so you have it, you have Inkscape. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna wait a few minutes. Let's see. Hmm. Okay, so um, this is the link right here. You can just, for those of you who don't have it, just go here and download it. You'll set it up. Um, I guess most of you do have Inkscape. So we will move on to the next step. If someone is still installing, just let it be and you can catch up. We're not going to move very fast. Okay, so the next thing is to do is to download the palette. So I covered this in the previous session also. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through this. So if you if you have just installed Inkscape or if you don't have the palette, this is what it's going to look like. You're going to have the default Inkscape palette. It's, but uh, since we need the badges to be uniform and uh, kind of look the same, we have this badges palette so that the colors are somewhat similar. Um, this is not to say that you don't need to stick to these colors only. Um, of course, if the artwork requires, you can uh, you have the creative freedom to do so. Just make sure that you start with these colors. If these colors work, that's great, right? And uh, to install this palette, all you have to do is, okay. so this is a GPL file, a GIMP palette file. So these are the hex codes, these are the RGB codes. So to download this, all you have to do is save link as, and then we have the GPL file, as you can see right here. And so this is the place that you need to go to. Uh, you need to save it in this folder, Inkscape slash palettes. So this is for Windows. So this is the part that I have users, Smira, app data, roaming, Inkscape palettes. So this is for Windows. If you have some other OS, you can just uh, search it and you will find um, where you have to install this. Right. And this is the extended color palette. If you want, you can install it too. I mean, you're doing it, so why not, right? Um, let's see if anyone has anything. Can you guys hear me now? Hmm. Oh, okay. Thought I lost connection there. Um, did I? I can go over and think that I, that um, I missed because I was talking continuously for the first uh, five minutes. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue, but yeah, you can download the palette here. And while you're at it, install the Comforta typeface too. Uh, so any text or any numbering that you have in the batch, uh, we use Comforta typeface for it. So uh, you can just click this link and you can download it. So I already have it. Yeah. So shall we move on then? Let's see what's the next step. Hmm. So we have the Inkscape, uh, we have Inkscape, we have Palette, the templates. So we're going to, of course, download the templates afterwards when we have identified the batch that we're going to design. So the next thing is to identify a ticket that needs artwork. So for this, everyone is going to work on their own badges. So I have dropped the link right here. And um, what I need is since if this was uh, in a physical setting, I would come over to your uh, workstation to help you guys out in selecting tickets, but can't do that. So um, I'll share my screen. Um, and if you guys need any help deciding a ticket, you can um, you can, I think there's a button somewhere here where you can um, 
select uh, ask to join ask to participate something like that and um, if you then you can share your screen and then i can help you choose a ticket if you are confused otherwise i'm going to go through the issues myself right now and we'll, we'll identify some good tickets together okay so this is hmm so i would say this is this is something i think this is a good first issue um so basically what this badge is about is you have to design a badge for l10 and group members um so basically this ticket if you look at it this describes uh like what the badge is for who is who is going to be getting these badges and this person has also suggested an artwork like um what they want it to be like so that's great if someone is looking for an issue i need to drop this link you can maybe work on this So I think this will be a community batch, right? Because this is a part of the community, right? So you can download the community template. Um, this one, actually this one is complete. I have this, so I am the assignee here. I have actually made the batch. I did not have time to post it. So you can skip this one. This is also ready to push. Hmm, oh. I think this might be easy. Okay, so turning extra extra into a series. So this is really easy, I would say. Actually, one of the first badges that I designed was actually turning an existing badge into a series. So we have this extra extra badge. I really love the artwork for this one. Um, okay, so we have this badge right here and uh, so when we turn a badge into a series, what we do is we generally, um, if you don't have any, like if you are, if you don't have any creative idea, what you can do is you can just add a numbering. So um, currently we have the extra extra badge for magazine contributors. So we we need additional badges for the five article, ten article, twenty five article level. So what you can do is. We can just add one, the number one, somewhere right here. Maybe you can um, sort of so reduce the size of this badger. Add the one here, maybe somewhere. That's for you to figure out. And so basically, when we want to convert a badge into a series, what we do is we add different numbers. So we add one, five, ten, twenty-five. So this indicates so this badge was awarded for writing one article this batch was awarded for writing five articles so this is a good first issue um and if you're working on it you can okay so i don't have the take button here if you guys have it then you can just there's a take button right here or anything click it i am not sure why i don't have it um this has been a problem uh, i think you need to be a member of the badges group on Pidgeot or something like that I'm not really sure why I don't have it, um, but this assignee is so that two people don't work on the same issue uh, because we have a lot of different issues to cover. So I'm just going to drop this link right here. And if you have decided on the badge that you want to work on, we can just um, maybe if we can use the if we have the take button there. Oh, right. Yeah, so if you have decided an issue, so just, I guess, write um, here in the chat box itself that you're taking this issue so that multiple people do not take up the same issue. Um, but yeah, if you do that, um, I will talk to someone to see why we don't have that take button. <laughs> um, but yeah. So I think I will do a couple of more. So this is a good first issue. Um, you can take this one. It's labeled a good first issue. Um, so this is for the butter FS. Yeah, so we were discussing this in a session earlier also. Um, you can use uh, the idea is butter. You can 
go through the comments. A lot of people have discussed what they're looking for. And maybe people have suggested artwork ideas also here. So this is also a good first issue. Oh, I think I should drop the link here. Hmm, could be. I mean, I remember that when I started, like Nyarika, when I started uh, contributing, so Marie would tell me that there is a pencil icon in, on the, like, right there. And I've seen it. Some people do have that pencil icon, and then they can just click on it, edit, and um, they can add tags. They can assign the task to someone or to themselves. Uh, so I don't know. I, I do have that pencil icon in some other picture uh, repos. I think it was Nero. Fedora or something, but I don't know why I do not have it in design or badges. Maybe, maybe they're removing it, but I don't know how that would work since we need to edit uh, the tags. So <laughs> I have no idea if someone is here from the technical side, um, maybe they could help us. But <laughs> honestly, I don't know why we don't have that. Yeah, that's a great idea. We can just you can just comment on the ticket itself and here also so that other people who are here can work, choose a different one. Okay, so I think I have chosen I guess I have a couple of I've given you guys a couple of different tickets that you can work on or if you don't like any of these you can just use the filter. Um, Artwork needs improvement is generally easy because you already have the artwork. Or well, it depends on the category also. Sometimes the artwork needs improvement means you have to start the artwork from scratch. Um, I think this one might be complete though. Let's see. We have a lot of comments here, so you will have lots and lots of resources and... Hmm. I think this one is not. Yeah, okay, so you can use this one because as you can see, um, this is touching the ring. The artwork is quite like outside uh, the background. So this one needs a couple of quick adjustments. If you, re if you match it to the style card, you will see that there are a couple of things that need to be fixed here. And um, that makes for a good first issue because you already have all of this artwork. You just need to... Um, spruce it up, so to say. So I drop the link for this one and then we can move on. Right, so what is the next step? Research. Oh, this is honestly my favorite part. I mean, because we have, a, once you have decided a ticket for yourself, the first thing you, you should do is you should look at similar badges uh, because A, you can get a lot of artwork from there so you can remix that artwork. B, if you don't have any idea or inspiration, that, like similar, the, those badges will help you out. So it helps you choose a concept for your badge also. So for gathering inspirations, you can go to, you can go to the earlier badges, you can go to the docs, you find a lot of artwork there. Um, these are the graphics. The or you can just so if you have the concept, you can just Google, and or maybe any search engine that you're using, just look it up. So if someone was to say designing a batch that required a bicycle, and if you're making it from scratch, so you might need a reference. So you can just Google references. And of course, existing badges. I mean, I think this one is the most important resource because honestly, I've, I don't think I've like, ever, I think I made once um, a, an artwork from scratch and it was not very good. So you just go to Fedora badges and uh, let's see. I remember one of the badges was about the L10N group. So if someone is a member of the L10N group, they get the badge. So what you can do is you can look at what other groups have their badges. So um, it also helps you categorize. So I think this was this is a 
one of the top few tickets on the repo and it's about uh, so the need a badge for someone who's in the L10N group. And there are a couple of different badges like that for different groups. So this is the uh, badge that you get if you are a member of the design team. So you can see like we have this ninja and this paintbrush. So you see how that works. Um, this is the um, com ops team. This is the security team. And this is pretty great. <laughs> and um, this is the uh, this is the sysadmin main team. Uh, so you can see if you you will probably find um, inspiration. I remember the L10 and badge already had an artwork idea. So um, you can probably use some of these artworks. So you can uh, let me just open that one. Is it okay if the ninja's paintbrush pokes out of the ring? It is actually not all the time though. Uh, I mean. Stylistically, yeah, it looks good, right? It pokes out. A lot of badges actually has have like this, but it sort of goes over the uh, ring. But it's not something that is that you're supposed to do all the time, or if it sort of mars the actual artwork. I mean, honestly, um, not all of these badges are um, uh, adhere to the style guide. Um, some of these badges are actually from even before the style guide was made. So that's why we try to stick to the style guide so that we don't end up deviating more. So if you see, this is pretty creative, right? I mean, they broke the ring. This is pretty creative. So if you have a concept like this, it's okay to do this uh, once in a while. That's not a problem. Yeah, I hope I answered your question. Um, but more so than often, it's better to stick inside. Actually, this badge was designed by Marie, and I I, I trust her. Uh, she knows what she's doing. So um, if she if she <laughs> uh, if she has the badge out of the ring, <laughs> I guess that works. So yeah, I guess when it well, it's only a small part. If you see that this is the just the umbrella, kind of gives the um, effect that that thing is poking out, right? You can see the flag is sort of on the ring. So I guess it's the sort of effect that you're going for. Yep. Okay, so um, let me just give you an example of how um, I work if I was working on a badge. So what I would do is, so they have an artwork suggestion right here. So I'm going to Google what an Arab top is. Okay, okay, so this garb right here. Okay, so this is an Arab top, now I know. And holding a calligraphy pen. So what does a calligraphy pen look like? I know there are a couple of different versions, but what's the most recognized one? Hmm. Well, I can see 10 different options here. I think this one would be the way to go. You can see this is a pretty recognizable shape. I would say something that you can actually mimic easily in Inkscape too. Um, yeah, so that is the first thing you do. You do your research. And um, okay, so I know that there is a badge that has a guy, a panda, writing on a desk. Hmm, let's see if I can find it. Hmm. Use this guy, this one right here. So maybe something like this. Maybe I just need to draw the upper half of the guy. Maybe I can just reuse this, add the top here and turn this pencil into a calligraphy pen and remove the flag. Maybe. That is an idea. So that is actually true. Um, that's, I agree with Sayak. Uh, it would make it too specific to it would make it too Arabic when the localization team, they don't just do Arabic translations, they do translations from, like they do I 72 different languages. I remember last time I checked, they had like over 70 or 80 languages that they translate. So 
you could maybe uh, look up existing L10 and badges. Hmm. I know there was a badge that I designed. Okay, so an important part of the uh, research is also looking up the like. So right now we are designing it for the L10 in group, right? Um, so for those of you who don't know, the L10 in group is the localization group, and I know this because I did some research on this because I was making a graphic for them. Uh, before that, I did not know what localization was. So um, you can actually Google. Uh, I, what I would do is I would just Google and then in Flora. For the best, I have the project, everything here. So just go through it, look at what they do, if they have some existing artwork that they have used. Uh, I'm just trying to look up their pejor. I don't think they have their. I designed some artwork. Okay, let's see. So I designed some artwork uh, of an infographic that is currently under review for the L10 and P. And let's see if that helps. Okay. Oh, I'm not deviating. Oh, let's see. Ah, I see. Oh, so you can use an earth, uh, like you can try to make uh, an earth thingy, um, a graphic. So this is the, this is the infographic that I made for the L10 and team. So they did not have a lot of graphics. So I made this because they do like a lot of different translations. And I think the globalization team would also have a couple of different graphics that could be relevant here, the interna internationalization one. I did not know like well, one week before I designed this, I knew nothing about localization or interna internationalization. So you could maybe, you know, like, do something, okay, none of this is honestly relevant here. Let's just skip that, but yeah. So I designed this from scratch. I, used to, I read up on a research what the group does. So they do translations and maybe you could, maybe one could use this or something like that, maybe. Uh, so these are just, you can always discuss the ideas in the Telegram group or on IRC. The, Fedora badges, let me see if anyone is interested in drawing the Fedora badges telegram group, I will, if telegram decides to open, that is, hmm, okay, there we go. So this is the badges group and copy link. So this is the if you want to discuss possible artwork ideas something you can join this group anyway so i hope everyone has an idea of uh, what i mean when i say research so it's not just researching existing artworks it's also researching what the badge is about and uh, why are we creating like why do we need that badge so that actually helps you give your badge a sense of direction um i'll give a, a small example and then we'll move on um that is actually a really good example so when i first started uh, let's see when i first started uh when i was designing badges i think three four months ago um there was this badge it will just open. Um, let's see if I don't think I'll find it. There are a lot of different badges here. Um, I know what it search. So, okay, so there was this badge. Um, 
there you go. So there was this badge that was needed for closing picture issues. So um, I did not know what to do. And if you see the kind of artwork I made, I mean, it's cringe, honestly. I don't like it now. Um, so I'm just going to show that, you know, sometimes it, after a little bit, like everyone starts out here. So they have a panda sitting and looking at a piece of paper with files on one side, a trash can on the other, and scattered papers around it. Um, this was my version, and if you compare it to the style guide, it's not um, there. It's not. It does, there are a lot of different mistakes that I see right now. Uh, this panda looks so weird. Um, but yeah, so after Marie reviewed it, so this is what she did. She said, I just looked up a jure and it means hermit crab. What about a cartoon looking hermit crab on the beach? I did not know that. I did not do enough research. If I'd done enough research, I would have found out. And maybe then, yeah, so this is after she suggested this idea. This is what we did. So, oh yeah, I remember this. Is, uh, this is a good concept, um, but make sure that when you are kind of like you can't really use it as it is, um, because when you compare it with the style guide, there are a lot of things that need to be adjusted. Needs to have a little stroke here, a darker green stroke, and yeah. So when you're using this, you can use this concept and uh, apply the style guide to it, and then. I think this would make a pretty good badge. So you can use a globe icon. Yes, exactly. It's a source of inspiration. And it's a really nice one too. It's just make sure that you don't have too much going on because the badges are really small. So we have a really small area. So make sure it's not really complicated because if, if um, even though this is a source of inspiration, let's say someone decided to use this exact artwork and you know modify it and use this. If it was very small, which badges usually are, this is what it would look like. And well, nothing makes sense here, does it? But that is another point that we have to take care of. It's that there is not too much going on. Um, keep it simple. That's what I would say, because it's a really small space that you're working with. And generally, people view badges on mobile, so it's even smaller. Okay, so I guess it's time to move on. Just going to close some of these badges. This one, this is the first artwork I made from scratch. I was honestly very intimidated, but if you look at it, it's just a bunch of shapes that I kind of joined together. So yeah, I was pretty proud of it then. The keyword being then. Um, I can definitely improve it now, but yeah, that's what, I'm, what I mean is we all got to start somewhere, right? Okay, so the next thing is categorization. So um, you can use this style guide to categorize your badge. Um, so we have different categories here. And if you have any trouble, you can always ask on the ticket itself. You can comment. The person who opened the ticket will be able to help you, or someone from the design team will be able to help you out. Or um, you can just ask on the Telegram group. And then you can download the corresponding template. So if you have a community badge, so you can just download the community template. And this is the SVG file right here. So you will get this. Just right click, save as, and then you can save it, you can rename it, and then open it on Inkscape. So, if you have decided a badge and you're able to find the category for it, you can download a template. If you need any help, maybe you can drop your ticket link right here. And uh, if you don't, if you're not able to decide the category, we can do that together. Okay, so the next thing is the background. 
So if you look at the style guide, the style guide suggests some different color backgrounds for different categories. So we discussed this before uh, when I first was discussing the style guide. Right. I think a pretty good example is, uh, okay. Yeah, the pretty good example is this, as you can see, the development category. So for comics, we have a pink background. For Koji, there is a light blue background. For So basically, there is a sort of um, a very, I would say, soft guidelines um, to follow. And what happens is, if you follow these guidelines, I'll show you. It looks really pretty because then all the values are very uniform. Hmm. Right. So if you see, there is a sort of theme going on around here. Um, so the development badges are kind of, they have a very similar aesthetic, right? So these are all like pale colors in the background. The community colors are much more brighter and louder. So of course you can always, if, if the artwork that you're making requires it to go out of the style guide a bit, a little bit of creative freedom is always there. Like this one, for example, this has a pretty elaborate background. Um, so it stands out a little. But yeah, I mean, if you are doing something that fits in here, go ahead. If you have a good idea, if you want to be creative, you can always go to spare. But this is a good place to start if you don't know where to start. Okay. So the next thing is, right, you can select the color from the Fedora and badges palette. So, um, Let's open a badge, right? Hmm. Let's see what all badges I have. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know which one to open. Um, okay. Should I? Okay, let's do this one. So this is the badge that I'm, uh, I worked on recently. Um, this is the badge for the zine. For someone who contributes to the zine, they'll get this badge. Um, and there are a couple of different problems with it. So this ring needs to be blue. So since I have the um, palette here, I can just easily select this. Oh, my bad. Yeah. So if, oh, um, so this is the stroke, right? And if you want to change the color of the stroke, just press shift and then click the color. So if I press shift, it's going to change the stroke. And if I do not press shift and just simply click on it, it's going to set the fill. So that's something I found out really later on and it's sort of helped me a lot. So yeah, uh, you can see the shadow is also a little messed up. It's supposed to be down. It's supposed to be on the bottom. I don't know, I think I messed up the template. So I have to do this again. But yeah, and if you look at the pattern, um, that's not something that we usually do. Uh, so this pattern is actually a pattern from the zine itself, and I use that here because it makes sense here, right? This artwork also is not something like this is a, a hand-drawn illustration. So this is not something that you will find in other badges. But since the zine is supposed to be a hand-drawn magazine, um, it has that aesthetic. It fits in there, right? So a little bit of creative freedom is um, you, are, you can always be creative, right? So let's see. Okay, so this is the most important part. I would say is save um, because Inkscape Inkscape sometimes crashes. Okay, and especially the if you have updated to the latest one version, it crashes, and I've lost a lot of work because of it. So this is something I say from personal experience. Please keep on saving your work. And also, I learned yesterday that you can actually set up autosave on your Inkscape. So it's somewhere in the preferences. I don't exactly know where it is. I remember someone said you can find it in the preferences. Mm, you can 
maybe if someone knows they can help me out but somewhere here you can oh auto save there we go so you can actually set the interval interval here and you don't have to worry about losing your work so that's really helpful for those of you who have worked on Inkscape you know uh, how much frustrating it is when it stops working and crashes otherwise it's a pretty great tool to use so yeah the next thing we have is okay so the background can vary depending on the concept so you can either draw your own background you can maybe do a graphical illustration or you can import it from an existing badge or maybe you can use gradients. So um, if you want to use gradients, uh, let's say, okay. So this is the gradient thing. Wait, I have a pattern fill. Mm. So this is actually a PNG image. So it's not going to work on this one. But if you have a badge open, you can let's see. I'll open another one. Mm -hmm. This is one of the older concepts. So you work a lot, right? I mean, you can make different iterations and come back to them and see how you feel about them. Like I do not feel good about this right now. Uh, but yeah, so you can change the color. You can go to the fill option. You can add a gradient experiment a bit see what works what doesn't you can maybe add a pattern on top of it okay so to align the pattern you can use the align and distribute tool so i have selected the two objects and then i'm going to align them so let's make sure that you don't you know it's aligned perfectly and looks good so and just keep saving Okay, so if you have any doubts, anything to do with Inkscape or maybe badges, you can drop them here. I am checking it. Or if you maybe want to share your screen and ask something, um, you can request. I think there is a button right there. Um, right where it says leave for me, I think it says join for you. So you could do that. Anyway, let's move on. Align and distribute is a great tool to use. And if you are working with badges, you may, you need to make sure that everything is lined up. So it's going to come in really handy. Okay, so this is the this, this is the thing that you're going to use the most is when you're going to download artwork, right? So as I showed you, there are SVG files on the tickets and you can download these SVG files. These are the PNGs, but the PNGs are not editable. So you can download the SVGs. Occasionally, what will happen is you will encounter an older file. So after it was migrated, like after the system migrated from Fedora hosted, uh, there was an error. And there are some files that if you click on them, this is what you're going to find. And this is what happens in the earlier batches. I will try to see if I can. Oh. I'm trying to figure out why I can't I can't get the extended palette to work for me. Hmm. Maybe you can share your screen or you can describe the problem that you're having and we can troubleshoot it right now. Okay, so you can if you want to share your screen, you can okay, there we go. Um, okay, I will share my screen. Hi, Kai. Hey. <laughs> Okay. Oh, you have the um, yeah. So I have the Fedora RGB uh, palette working, but mm. and I also kind of I don't know. Okay, I also downloaded uh, the extended palette, but I can't find okay. it. Okay. So I'm trying to figure oh, so out. did you uh, put it in the correct work yeah. like path? Yeah. Path. Yeah. Uh, did you restart Inkscape? Have you tried restarting it? I actually did not. 
that's <laughs> I think the first rule of IT is try turning it off and on again. <laughs> yeah, she's really dumb about that, but yeah. <laughs> no, no, trust me. The things I have done, uh, even I did not know like what where I was going wrong with the pilot. Ah, I got it. So yeah, I just need to. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Great. So if anyone ha else is having the same trouble, you can maybe just try restarting it. Yeah, and I just got it uh, on the pallet as well. So I think it's this one. Yeah, so the, uh, this is the extended one, right? And this is the normal one, right? Wait, um, I, I can't actually, I'm trying to look. It's very tiny, so. Um, so uh, maybe yeah, can... okay, yeah, this is the normal one. Yeah, okay. I maximize your screen. So this is the basic one, and then you have the extended one. Okay, sure. Thanks. Great. Uh, no sorry. problem. Oops, sorry. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to start sharing my screen again. Hmm. Which one? Oh, I'm just going to share my entire screen. There we go. Okay, so where were we? Just going to close. I have so many tabs open. Okay. Right, I was showing you that you might encounter some broken links. So I'm going to go to the picture, the badges repo, and yeah. So, hmm. So while the newer issues, so now we are in the 700s, but there are issues that are like, let's start by last modified date. Yeah, so the earlier uh, badges, I think you might find the, so this is six years ago, so that's a long time, so I think. Hmm, let's see. Uh, right, so you might find this, like you you will see a lot of this. Uh, just ignore that and scroll and scroll and you'll find a lot of duplicate comments. So uh, these comments are on the older tickets, you'll find that the comments are duplicate. So if you click this one, this is what's going to happen. You'll get a 404 error. So if you want to fix this, all you have to do is take out the files and oh backslash. Press enter and you can download it. So I actually did not figure this out for a really long time. Um, but yeah, the, the older badges will have this problem. And you will also encounter if so you have two like two copies here, you have duplicates, right? So if you click the other one, you get this. I find this even more scary than a 404 error. So, yeah, so you can fix it by replacing this part of the URL by this. So I actually have not tried this one ever. I would just go to the other one. I thought this was not fixable. Let's see. I'm supposed to delete this. Let's see if this works. It did. So, yeah. So, this is a known issue, and we have a fix for this. So, all you have to do is delete, either delete the files and a backslash or you change this part with this part. Okay, so if you're talking about graphics, you can draw from scratch um, or you can import graphics. You can use other graphics as it is. By other, I mean badge, uh, graphics from other badges or you can reuse them and sort of change the colors. You can use a lot of different graphics together. You can remix them. So um, maybe I wanted a panda sitting in a chair and but I did not want the lemonade glass. So I can if I have the SVG, I can just delete this. Just make sure that you evaluate your design with this style guide. Something which I have not done here. 
So while I did try to stick to the design guide, I know that the stroke needs to be a bit more heavier. Um, maybe some color here, like some stroke in the background. But this, so okay, so what I wanted to show here was this style was actually inspired from this batch. So I picked up the sand and the sky, deleted the ocean, made this little guy, and we have this. I mean, this is not a final batch. This needs a lot of work, but that's how you, that's how I go about it. So, yeah, I mean, as I said before, the, ex the badges index is a really great tool uh, to find artwork. I mean, I've stolen a lot of graphics from there and reused them, remixed them. So, yeah. Let's see if we have any doubts. No? Okay, so if anyone needs to ask something, again, you can ask it right there. And I'm going to discuss the final part of making a badge. And that is exporting it. And this is the most important part of any badge because even if you did everything right here, if you do not export it correctly, you could end up with a badge that needs to be worked on. So the thing is, in Inkscape, those who are not familiar, there, there are a couple of different export options. So when you export it as a PNG, you have page, drawing, selection, and custom. So what happens is page, page means this area right here, this canvas. So this is the page. And um, if you export it using a page, which is what it's supposed to do, you will see that the width and the height of the badge is 256 by 256. And that is what's supposed to happen. Like you need it to be 256 by 256, otherwise it's messed up on the screen. So by default, when you're exporting an image, it's actually drawing. And I have done this mistake so many times that I exported it as a drawing and I had to export it again. It just takes, I mean, it's not a very big deal. You just export it again. But the thing is, um, it takes a couple of days for someone to point out that mistake. It's a whole thing. So just make sure that you're exporting it correctly. So what, what they mean by drawing is that they're going to export everything that is here, like all the stuff that you have drawn. So you're going to, if I export it right now as a PNG, this is what's going to be there in the PNG. And even if you don't have anything on the screen beyond your badge, even if you export it as a drawing, what it's going to do is going to export only this area, like this outering area. This is 242 by 242 pixels. So you don't need that. Um, because the thing is, you again, you need it to be 256 by 256 at 90 dpi. So make sure uh, you have the settings correct. But yeah, just make sure you export it correctly. Uh, you can change your export settings here. You can change the folder, rename it. And after that, make sure you click export, which I don't do a lot of times. If I forget to click export, that's when it actually exports the PNG. Sorry about that. Oh, oh, I did not see that. Oh, glad I cleared that up. No, even I did not know that. I remember when I started um, designing, I just read somewhere. I saw the people, they were doing the same mistake and um, someone from the design team would point it out. And I actually, I was like, okay, so export it as a page, export it as a page. So instead of understanding why, I just kind of memorized it. Um, and I would often get confused. Was it page or was it drawing? But yeah, now I know. So selection is um, in that same manner. Selection is this area. So if I select this and just export this, so this is the area that's going to be exported. So everything inside this rectangle. And well, custom, as the name suggests, you can um, type in your own area, your own custom area, and that portion of the whole can like the whole file will be exported. Okay, so I'm glad that helped you out, Udwarik and Sylvia. 
If you have any other doubts, please feel free to ask them. We do have another half an hour and honestly, I'm done with my presentation. So it's all you guys now. So I would love to see if you have worked on something. I would love to see and help you if you're stuck somewhere maybe. Okay, so the last step in this process is after you have a draft of the badge, you need to post it. So you need to publish it on the ticket. So if you, I'm just going to give you a small demo, how it works, how you add graphics to Pajor if someone is not familiar. So this is the badge. So what you have to do is you enter your comment. Maybe if you have any questions or if you have, if you want to point out something in your design, you can type it and just browse and make sure that you upload the SVG and the PNG both. So the reason we do that is sometimes what happens is you may not be able to complete a design. And if you post this SVG here, you can always, someone else can always pick it up and continue working on it. And that makes sure that your work is not wasted. So always make sure that you come, uh, you have both the SVG and the PNG. The PNG is important because um, as far as I know, I may not be 100% correct, but the PNG is the thing that is pushed to the repo so, so that you have the badges that you actually see are PNGs. Mm -hmm. So it's, that's why it's important to have uh, the PNG. And people can actually, if you don't, if someone does not have a graphic editor like Inkscape, or they don't know how to view SVG files, uh, PNGs load in your browser. So they can uh, review your design in the browser. So that's why when you're uh, doing any design, not just in Fedora badges, if it's in uh, Fedora design also, make sure that you upload the SVG and the PNG. Yes, yay, I was right. I, I kind of assume because that's why uh, we are sticklers for making sure that the SVG is 256, oh, sorry, the PNG is 256 by 256 pixels. Okay. So after you do that, you can, uh, someone from the design team will review your work. Um, you can always drop the link in the badges uh, group on Telegram or on IRC. And someone will review it. So that's all from my side. Um, oh, did something happen to my image and voice? Did it disappear? Mm. Sorry, I have crappy internet. Um, um, I can wait, maybe try leaving, um, joining again, if it doesn't fix itself in a minute or two. Is it lagging? Could be that it's lagging a lot. If someone else could also confirm what's happening. Oh. Okay, um, so maybe Sylvia, you could try refreshing. Uh, if it doesn't work for you, maybe you could try refreshing and see, I think that will help you. And uh, yeah, okay, great. So does anyone wanna share if they've done something or if they are working with something? Uh, they can, ask to join. Oh, it, it, does it work now, Sylvia? Yay. Okay, so we have around 30 minutes left. Um, yeah, 35 minutes, 30, 30 minutes, right? So if anyone wants to share their work, um, this would be a good time. Or if you have anything to share with Inkscape, um, something to pick up, or I can um, tell you guys about some features that I, uh, I can help you in Inkscape while designing badges, because um, all I wanted to tell you, that's like, 
I'm already done with that. So would you guys like to learn some Inkscape hacks as I call them? Um, or you can just show your work because we do have a half hour left. I mean, this, this thing is going to run to, for two hours. Can you show how I can add something from the templates to the badge on a layer? Yeah. So just to make sure that I understand your question correctly, um, when you say templates, do you mean the empty templates or do you mean the existing badges? The existing, so basically the uh, older artworks with the characters. Okay, great. Let's do a fresh one, right? Um, go to badges. If you have a badge in mind that you would like me to do specifically, you can drop the link here or I can just pick any random badge. I actually have a badge that would be good for this. I'm going to open. Hmm, let's see. So I have a bunch of different badges here. This is the ambassador badge, the pirate. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cowboy badge. Here. Yep. Ah, uh, okay. That's great. Honestly, I would love to see what you come up with because um, L10N is a very good team. They work so much. I would really like them to have a badge. Okay. So this is a, this is an existing badge. And um, let me just ask uh, Sayak, are, are you okay with um, downloading the badge? Or should I do that also? Because I have, I had it. Yeah, you're okay. Okay, great. So after you open the badge, this is what you get. And let's say I wanted to have a badge. So a lot of times these elements will be grouped together. Sometimes they may not be. This is not. So the first thing I'm going to do is if I need, let's say I need this guy, right? I'm going to select all of this. Hmm, I've not selected everything, right? To select this guy right here and just going i'm just checking if i have everything there and then i'm going to group it and i'm going to oh wait i am going to see so basically what is happening here is we have a clip ungroup ungroup Hmm, there are a lot of different layers here. Okay, this guy. There we go. So we have removed this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to release clips. So these are all clipped. Um, and then we have this guy. Right, and it's already grouped. So you can use it. You can just copy it. And now this one has a friend. So you can do that. Um, the set clip tool is something that a lot of people, I don't know, I did not know about it until I would say two months ago. So if you want me to go over the set clip tool because it's used very frequently um, while you're designing a badge because you need to get the specific shape of the badge. So if you want, I can discuss that. Um, that's actually really fun to use. So yeah, okay, great. So, so the set clip tool is actually, as you saw, if I have this guy right here and I want to kind of cut it around this shape, that's why we use the set clip layer. So I'm just going to kind of undo everything and I'm going to delete this guy for now. I have it copied, so that's okay. So. An easy way to understand what the set clip tool does is think of it as cutting cookies from a cookie dough. So you, how you have the cookie cutter, this shape right here, this is the cookie cutter, and this guy right here is our cookie dough. 
So what you do is we will position it somewhere here. Let's say I only want it here. I don't want the bottom half. I only want the top half. So yeah, okay. So what I do is I'm going to select this object right here, the shape, this is our cookie cutter and I'm going to duplicate it. So to duplicate, you can use right click duplicate or the shortcut control D. And now you have a copy of the cookie cutter, so to say, on, the, on top of the stack. So it's important that you use duplicate because what duplicate does is it copies the object right on top of the original object. If we use copy paste, so if I copy this, I have copied this, and if I paste it somewhere here, it's going to paste wherever my mouse pointer is. So if I even if I try to paste it on top of the original object, I will be definitely be off by a few pixels. We don't want to do that, so I would advise you to select the duplicate tool. Then we select the object on top. This is our cookie cutter. A cookie a cutter should always be on top when you're cutting a cookie. Select the dough, right click, set clip. So now we have this in the shape of our badge. I hope that makes it clear. I can do a couple of more examples if you want. This comes in really handy. Um, if you want to sort of clip the object in a specific shape, um, Inkscape does not have a crop tool as far as I know, so you can also use it as a crop tool. Just use a rectangle and basically use that, a rectangle as a cookie cutter. And the thing about set clip is it's non-destructive. So the thing is, even though this guy does not have a bottom half, the thing is, if you do release clip, you get back your cookie cutter and your badger. So that's why it, uh, the thing is, when you are using set clip, it consumes the cookie cutter. So uh, that's why we create a duplicate and do not use the original one. Okay, so you can try sort of experiment with it a little bit. It's really fun. So if I put the badger on top and let's see what happens. So the badger is now the cookie cutter and so it's in the shape of the badger. So maybe this can work nice for silhouettes if you want. Yeah, it's it's really simple. I mean, I can't tell you the times I have like tried to adjust ob objects pixel by pixel. Yeah, so now basically the whole thing has uh, the pattern, the pattern of the dough, and now our dough was this pink background. So honestly, set clip is really fun to use. Um, yeah, I mean, if you. Let's see, let's try to have some fun here. What happens if I do multiple? So you can do a create clip group and that does not work. So you can't do multiple things. I think what you can do is you can convert this to check to art maybe. I don't know what I'm doing right now. And Yep, there we go. So if you want to use multiple cookie doughs and there you go, now you have a half blue badger silhouette. But yeah. So this is what the set clip tool is. It's really fun to use. It's going to help you a lot. I mean, you're going to use it if you're designing badges. <laughs> uh, yeah, I just kind of chose this one. I really like it. And honestly, if you, oof, these notifications. Okay, so honestly, if you look at the, look at some of the badges and kind of play around with them a bit and you ungroup or sorry, release the clip, you'll find that there are some hidden objects. Sometimes there are some old artworks or sometimes it's really funny down there because the bottom half is underdeveloped. Um, 
I think I remember a badge just like that. Hmm. So these are some of the more complex badges. Let's see if I can find the security badger. Yeah. Sorry, Inkscape is really slow. I'm pretty sure that it's going to crash because I have so many Chrome tabs open and I'm streaming. Okay. So, yep. So this guy right here, let's see what he is hiding. Hmm. So this guy actually <laughs> does not have any legs. Oh, these are some layers that are hmm, some messy patterns. Oh, we have a lot of patterns here. It's going to delete my board. That's a lot. Wow. Right. So this guy does not have any legs. It's just oh, this. So that's what that's what's gonna happen if you you know kind of play around mess around with the badges and release clip you don't even have to work on the whole badger that way you don't have to you just you can just clip it right where you want it and no one has to know okay let's see so is does anyone have anything else that they want to ask um mm, I'm trying to think of what else I can show you guys in Inkscape because I think I've pretty much covered the Fedora aspect. Like, you know, basically follow the style guide. That's essentially it. Um, if there's any specific feature that you would like to demonstrate, I can try that. Um, let's see, I'm thinking. I think one important thing is I'm, I, I mentioned this before also, but if you're trying to, let's say, I'm trying to recolor it. So this is a shortcut that I actually discovered a short time ago. So if I'm trying to change the fill, I can click. So this, uh, this is me just clicking and it's going to change the fill. So this changed the fill, right, as you can see. But if I press shift, I'm pressing the shift key right now and I press click, it's going to change the stroke. So that's really handy. Um, that's a quick way to change strokes. Before that, I was manually going and changing them. I was going in this panel here and selecting the colors, doing this. Yeah. So that's not a very good way. Um, let's see if you guys any. Oh, so I that's a cool idea because I actually. Oh, I'm so sorry. I did not realize that. I'm just going to kill the application from the task manager. But I don't actually have it open. Once it opens, it just keeps. Um, yeah. Oh, that's a lot. How do I? I honestly, it's, I, uh, I opened it once, and I'm just going to. Mute. I'm going to mute this one also, just in case. Yep. Okay. So, okay, so we have some comments. Uh, okay, so Sylvia says, so it's okay if it's legless. Actually, yeah. I mean, a lot of design um, is sort of like that. You just work on the part that is complete because no one really sees the bottom half. So it's okay if he's legless because I guess the person who designed that designed the badger from scratch. So And they knew they were going to use the top half anyway. So they decided to skip designing the badges. Oh, sorry, the legs. That's not a problem. And Sayak says, how about we try to do a quick design for a badge for this session's attendees? That's actually a cool idea. We can do that. So we have around 20 minutes. That's just enough time to do that. 
I have muted the notifications. Okay, Sylvia asks, click on the arrow. What arrow? Hmm. If, uh, if you could maybe, oh, oh, okay. I see. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> no problem, Louis. Okay, so let's design something for the session's attendees. Um, does anyone have any idea? Mm, let's see. I can go to the badges project to look up some inspiration. Um, or if you guys have any idea, we could work on it. Let's see. So I know that the design team has the design ninja. That is actually really nice. Um, something related to pen or arts, maybe. Yeah, we could use a palette. I think we have it in the badge index. So this is the place I go to first. Um, because everything that is in the docs, uh, in the templates, it is right here also. So if you guys point out, if you guys see anything, you can also, uh, I'll just drop this link again. If you guys want to look it up, maybe you can send a link of some of, of a badge. Oh, actually, we already have a badge for this. I remember it now. I saw it when I was watching the video for the previous workshop. We have this. I mean, it's pretty cool. So, yay, you attended a Fedora Badges workshop. So, I guess someone else probably thought of it first, but honestly, it was a good idea. So, this was actually designed four years ago. And it's cool. It's pretty nice. And it's loading. It's a little bit slow. There we go. This is the PNG. And um, okay, so uh, currently, uh, Marie, uh, I think this is Mismo and M. Leonova. These people have the authorization. What I'll do, yeah, definitely. We can create one for Nest specifically. Yeah, great. Okay, so now that we have an idea, like this is something that they want, people wanted. To, we can work on this. We can use a paintbrush. We can use a pen or we can use a palette. Think that would work. Since we have around 10 minutes left, I don't want to make anything too complicated. Um, we can use the palette from this artwork right here. Yeah, I mean, all of these badges are sort of art related. So you will definitely find something here. Um, I already have this badge. It's a paint, like I already downloaded it, but it's a pain to find. So I'm going to download it again. You guys can see how that works. So, yeah, this is one of the earlier badges. So if you will see, the links are kind of broken. So this was the, hmm. So even the PNGs don't load. So we can't really, we'll have to download each SVG and see which one works. Mm, nope. Let's see if this is the one. Nope. Um, what was this badge called? Uh, so this is the first badge. Okay. 
So maybe artist one mm, could be this one. I really like the, this series, but honestly, it's a pain to find the exact patch you want. The big fan also. It's not this one. Let's see. Hmm. Birth of Badger. Hmm. Wait. Let's see if I can open the PNG. I have to download the PNG also. So I'm just going to download the SVG. Um. Well, there are only six badges, and we're on our third try, so we are 50% through. Nope. Yes, third times. That's not the charm. Yep, that's what I'm trying to look for. It's just that all the badges for this series was, like, it's essentially uploaded in the same ticket, and they're not um, correctly named. I guess that's that could be a lesson for all of us to um, name it correctly. Um, my God, I think the last one that we're going to try, that's the one. Oh, I think it's this one. I hope it's this one. Uh, Yay, finally. Okay, so I'm just gonna open this one. And does anyone have any other idea how we could remix it? Ah, we found it. So yeah. Um I know, right? Trust me, I've been on this ticket so many times and this happens all the time like every time i have to download each and every one of them but yeah okay so we have this palette i think we can get rid of the background because it's very specific to the artwork um what do you guys think about that should i remove the background you can say yes or no yeah great so what i'm going to do is just select different bits and pieces and delete it. Nope, that's the background. Can't delete that. Just going to delete this graphics. There's a lot. But honestly, this this is this series is one of my favorite badges because it's so very pretty. Okay, so pro tip, if you want to select some, something, some object that is behind another object, so just drag this one right here, select this, and press Control Z or undo. Your selection will still be there. I use this all the time, and it's really helpful. So I'm going to do this again because we have another thing right here. Select this, undo, delete. I'm going to delete these layers also. Right. And this was a community badge, right? Yes, Nest specific. So um, we have the Nest logo, but honestly, I think if you put in the Nest logo, um, we could actually, what if we try to show that this guy is actually painting the Nest logo, maybe? What do you guys think? Like, yeah, yep, okay, great. I actually have the logo with me, so I'm just going to import it. Oh, let's see, next logo, there we go. Oof, that's a big board. Um, nope. I'm going to reduce, select the lock the aspect ratio and then do it. There we go. And I'm going to remove this background. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
ungroup nope one more time there we go delete it let's see if you guys have any other yeah it should be smaller right so i'm just going to resize this group this resize this and and i'm going to bring it to the top there we go so hmm, what is the next step i think we should change the background color and maybe lighten it a bit because it's quite heavy and the nest logo is very like light colored so it doesn't really it seems a little bit hmm i don't know it's missing it's missing something what do you guys think Yeah, right, I know, right, it's all blue. Oh, I've already grouped it. Oh, yes, that's exactly what I was thinking. We should make a canvas. Um, do we have a canvas? I don't want to make it from scratch. I think we might have a canvas somewhere, maybe. Otherwise, we'll make it from scratch. Meanwhile, you guys can also look through the uh, badges index, see if you can find a canvas. I. I'm not sure if there is one. Just going to quickly scan these. I mean, if there was, it would already be in the community section. Okay. Nope. Yes, let's look at the templates. Because designing from scratch is mm, not very fun. Uh, at least that's what I think. Uh, I go to docs. Did I drop the link here? I'm just going to. I have so many tabs open. I go. Okay. I'm going to go through my own slides and find the link here. This is the style guide. Yep. I feel like I've seen a canvas somewhere. Just going to use, look at this. Hmm. Okay, so let's see a canvas. No, right? Or did I miss it? Mm hmm. No canvas. Um, the badge graphic templates. Um, this is this is actually the. Wait, that was not fun. Okay, this is the miscellaneous graphics that I opened, and um, we have a mirror, but we don't have a canvas. We actually are looking for it. So this is the, uh, you guys want to help me look? I'll drop the link here. Maybe something that can be sort of modified to, to make it appear like a canvas. Maybe. Um, I'll drop the link here, see if you guys can think of something. Hmm. Or we can just Google a canvas image and, you know, sort of draw it from scratch. Not really a big fan. Uh, what do you guys think? Is there something else that we can use from here, maybe? Uh, hmm. I mean, we have this. This is a, actually a screen. A projector screen, maybe we can use this. Yeah, we we should create one from scratch. All right, you, you oh you could uh, we could show it to be to the badger to be painting in a meadow. That's actually a really nice idea. Let me just look up canvas. Um, 
like this, right? Um, so I'm just, I just copied that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paste it right here. So I do not draw graphics from scratch very often. So um, while the canvas is an easy thing to draw, I would say. Um, yeah, so please don't laugh at my failed attempts. I'm just I'm going to be going to see what works, what doesn't. Um, the fill, the stroke, and wow, okay. <laughs> mm, yep, I have sort of. Yep, there we go. So, just kind of. maybe do this definitely need to increase the stroke hmm yeah and uh, i think we could do something similar for these sticks just mm -hmm tiny bit of this, maybe make it a little bit round, I guess, three and three. Um, let's use this color and this color. I'm going to reduce the stroke because it's a small object. I'm going to see if you guys have any suggestions in just a minute. Do this, click on it, rotate it a bit. And put it behind. Does that look good? Yeah. Okay. Maybe should I round this? I don't know. I don't think so. Just going to copy oh, okay, this. I'm going to use this again right here. And Maybe I will copy this, paste it right here, and flip it. There we go. So use it here. I'm going to copy this again. This time I'm going to rotate it. And let's see. Oh, that's good. It's very tiny, no? So just hmm. What do you guys think about that? It's def definitely needs something more. This top bar here. Oh, uh, hi, people. <laughs> Thank you. We had a really nice time here. We are here. Oh my God, it's 124 already. Um, we are going to actually, the session is going to end in the next five minutes. So I'm just going to do whatever I can. Hopefully I'll complete this and I'll try to make sure that all of you guys who attended this uh, can uh, get the badge. So maybe you could join the telegram group and um, you know just put your names up there say hi i attended the uh, badges workshops and put your fas username so that i can make sure that you get this badge right so i'm going to put a pin in this for now just going to remove this one uh and I can, if you have any suggestions for the badge, I will open a ticket and maybe you guys can continue to work on it. I mean, you can, we won't tell anyone. <laughs> you were technically here <laughs> just in time uh, with two minutes to go. So. Okay, so 
if anyone has i'm just going to stop sharing my screen yeah yes exactly so the next thing i'm going to you do is i'm going to open a ticket on pejor for this i'm going to upload all these assets that i that i made and um if any of you want to pick it up you are welcome i can help you if you need any help uh you can email me you can telegram me i I'm on IRC, but I'm not very active. I think we can give people the badge. I think we can. Yes, I'll definitely share the link on the Telegram group. So everyone who is here, I would like you to, I would ask you to join the Telegram group, or maybe I can just look at the recording, but I don't have your FAS usernames. So um, yeah, if you join the group, then I can keep in touch with you and, um, then we can continue working on this patch. So I hope you guys, oh yeah, so I hope you guys liked the, the, the session. This was my second talk. And if you guys didn't notice, I was quite nervous. Oh, thanks, Vipul. And I'm, I am so happy, trust me, Sylvia, I'm so happy to see this energy. I hope so, Vipul. Um, I hope everyone liked the session. I hope you learn something um, because designing badges is really fun, but I know um, there are some initial hurdles um, and I hope if this helped you get past those hurdles and maybe start wanting to contribute. Oh, that's great. I'm so glad. Um, a recording of the session will also be available later on. So Sylvia, if you want to uh, watch the initial bit that you missed, you can. <laughs> 